Jesus and friends, this is part two of our video series on the intercession of Christ. My first question is, as a Christian, you know you're forgiven. As a Christian, you know you're justified. Yes, we'll use that word. Uh, as a Christian, you know that you are justified, meaning God has declared you righteous. You are not a sinner anymore. Uh, you are not declared a sinner anymore. You're not guilty anymore of sin. You are not sentenced to death but you still sin you still sin so the question is now what gives what are you gonna what if a spirit tells god hey god one of your kids is a sinner you should condemn him and god is just he does condemn sinners right so what what defense do you have god knows you're a sinner what defense do you have the answer is Jesus. He's your high priest. Uh, and Jesus is up there in heaven. He is interceding for you. Okay? So, in Romans chapter 8, verses 33 to 34, uh, we have the following passage. Who can accuse, who can lay up a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who can condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. So, what is he saying? He's saying that no one can actually accuse us. No one can actually uh, condemn us. Why? Jesus is interceding for us. And God justifies us. Okay? So, no one can condemn you. No spirit can say, no angel or devil can say to God, Hey God, that dude is a sinner. He admits he's a sinner. You should destroy him. You should kill him. No. No one can say that. Why? Why? Because Jesus is up there. He is interceding for us to the Father. Okay? So let's break that down. What is it? Uh, what does Jesus pray for? And is his prayers effective? So let's go back to the old covenant. The old covenant, uh, the old covenant priests, they always make sacrifices and they pray for people. But they weren't so effective. The blood of bulls and goats could not take away sin. But the good news is that Jesus is effective. Jesus is effective. His blood totally forgives all of our sins and his prayers are totally effective for the elect. Okay? Uh, the elect means the chosen, but uh, to, to remove confusion, let's just think of them as everyone who will believe. Okay? Everyone who will believe and everyone who does believe. God, God always answers the prayers of Jesus. Why? Because number one, Jesus is God's son. Number two, Jesus is God's obedient son. So Jesus always, always prays for us and his prayers are always answered. He also prays effectively for all true believers. Imagine that Jesus is praying for us to the Father. Okay? He's praying for us right now. The first thing Jesus prays for is for our repentance, okay? Jesus prays for our repentance. And how do we know this? Well, in Luke 22, verse 31, Jesus does that for Peter, who betrays him. Okay, flashback. Jesus was betrayed by Peter before his death. Peter said, oh, I don't know that guy. I don't know that guy. I don't know that guy. He does it three times, okay? Before that, Jesus already knew that he was going to betray him, okay? And this is what he said in Luke 22, verse 31. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift each one of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith will not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Okay, what does that mean? Number one, Simon... Simon, Satan has asked to sift each one of you like wheat. It means that Satan asked God that he would shake the faith of these 
uh, disciples. But, but Jesus prayed for Simon that his faith will not fail. Simon Peter, that his faith will not fail. And when he has turned back, strengthen his brothers. So Jesus knew that Simon would be shaken by Satan. Okay? Simon betrayed Jesus. But, but Jesus knew that Simon will not fail in his faith. So when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. He expected Simon to go back because he knew, he knew that you know, his prayer was effective. So in the same way, Jesus prays for our repentance. So imagine that if you're a sinner and you find it so hard to fight against sin, this is, an, this is so hopeful for you. Jesus prays for your repentance. Jesus prays for your repentance. He, uh, he's not helpless. Uh, he has the power to pray for your repentance, and you would repent. Okay, and that is our hope because we're so hopeless. Our hearts want other things, but when Jesus prays for you, God answers His prayer. Next, Jesus defends us from accusations. So imagine you're you're guilty of a crime, and then your lawyer steps up and says, "Objection, Your Honor." This man has already done his time. Okay? So, in the same way, in Jesus, we have a person who defends us from the accusations of the devil. Okay? Um, the devil and uh, maybe other angels or other human beings, they accuse, God, uh, they accuse us to God. Um, they say, oh Lord, this person is a sinner. You should kill him. You should destroy him. But Jesus says, uh, Jesus says to them and to the Father, I have already taken their punishment. Father, forgive them. Okay? So, Jesus shows God and shows the accusers that He has already paid for our sins. Jesus presents His death to the Father. He shows His Father that He has already died. And because God is so pleased with Jesus, He forgives us. Okay? God says, You have already taken the punishment for the people who will believe. And I will forgive them when they believe. Okay? So God justly forgives and accepts us because Jesus prays for us. So imagine that Jesus defends us from accusations. If you're, if you're a believer, this is helpful because you are very sinful. I am very sinful. And um, to know that Jesus is up there asking God to forgive us and getting heard, that is good news. That is good news. Jesus always gets His prayers heard. So we will always be forgiven when we ask for forgiveness. Number three, Jesus also asked God to prepare a home for us. So we're not meant for this world. We're not meant for this kind of earth. This earth with a coronavirus, this earth with pollution, with evil, with sin. We, we're not meant for this earth. We deserve it, but we're not meant for it. Jesus is up there in heaven. He says he prepares a place for us in John 14, 3. I will come again and I will take you to myself and that where I am, you may be also. So Jesus is preparing a place for us. And through his prayers, he is making this happen. He is asking God to prepare that place for us. His intercession prepares a place for us. That's why he, he, he's not supposed to be here right now. He's in heaven. He's preparing a place for us. So, what did, what did these things mean for us? How, how would that change the way you act, think, and feel? That will be the discussion in our next video, in our next video module. But for now, I have a question for all of you. Name the three things Jesus prays for, okay? What are the three things? All right. So that is it for the end of this. Uh, th that's the end of this video. Uh, in the next video, we'll be talking about the application. So I'll see you soon.